So, because of the whole COVID situation, I finally caved in, bit the bullet, and bought my own VR headset. Um, and originally, I was really unsure about which one to get. Uh, I finally decided on the Oculus Quest, however, there were many other options. Um, like, there's two headsets from Oculus, the Quest and the Rift S. You have HTC, although uh, HTC, I don't know, they're, they're, their headsets aren't very uh, competitive, in my opinion. Um, then you have the HP Reverb G2, which hasn't come out yet, but it also features inside-out tracking, much like the Rift S and the Quest, um, which is very interesting to me. And then you also have the Valve Index, but um, that's whew, that's a, that's a that's an expensive. That's a, uh, oh, it's so expensive. So I didn't really consider that one either. Um, looking back at it now, the choice was pretty easy uh, because. I was mainly stuck between um, the Oculus Rift S and the Oculus Quest. However, the Oculus Rift S is actually owned by Lenovo and hasn't really gotten much software support, so that kind of made me a little iffy on actually picking that one. However, the Quest has received countless updates um, and is still receiving updates and a lot of support. Uh, my only problem being that it's owned by Facebook and with recent controversy about forcing oculus users to have a facebook account tied to their oculus it's a whole thing and there's also the hp reverb that i did consider waiting for it to come out because it's still not out yet um however it will be priced around 200 to 250 dollars more so it just seemed like for the best value it, i had to go with the oculus quest not to mention it functions as a standalone headset so it doesn't have to be connected to your pc which is very, very convenient. So before I delve into the specs and any specifics, I just want to talk about the overall build of the headset. Um, and overall, I'm actually quite pleased with it. I think it's pretty good quality. Uh, the only problem I have with it is the material of the face cover. Now I have this silicone face cover that I bought for like uh, 15 bucks or something. It was, pre it was actually pretty cheap. Um, and it just goes over the foam face mask, which I don't understand why they would use foam. Something as porous and absorbent like foam just seems like a bad idea when you're attaching this thing to your face and you're just sweating it up and it's gross and if you're playing with friends it's <laughs> it's gross. It's gross. It's gross. Before you even consider buying the uh, Oculus Quest or like sharing it with friends, um, please, please, please buy a face cover. Uh, whether it can be this um, silicone material, they also have like pleather materials, something that doesn't absorb moisture and something you can just like wipe off with a nice little uh, paper towel or something, a nice little rag, please. You can also get other mods or like attachments that I got just to help with the padding, um, but uh, that's all up to you. However, please get the face cover. Other than that, I really like the overall build. I really appreciate how easy it is to uh, slide on and off because you just pull it back, put it on, like you pull it on and then just let it go. It attaches to your head nice and firm. It also comes with an IPD uh, slider for the interpupillary distance. So distances between the distance between your two eyes uh, is different for a lot of people. So there's, I'm sure uh, if you're sharing this with multiple people, they will really appreciate that. Um, the only problem that I have other than the foam material is just by virtue of being a standalone VR headset um, and that is the weight of the actual headset because it is very front heavy because it has all the it has the display and the processor and everything that's going on in there um, and it, you do get a pretty serious amount of goggle tan just from having it on your face and just having it pull down. Um, there are ways to counteract that with counterbalances that you can attach to the back. Some people strap um, battery banks to the back of it uh, just to also extend the life of the, the life of the battery. Uh, so there are ways to counteract that, but out of the box, it is pretty uncomfortable. Um, the, the actual overall design is, is good. I hear that the halo design where you crank the back of it is better, but uh, I've found that this build is 
is decent. Um, but yeah, having some kind of, uh, attaching some kind of weight onto the back, I could definitely see being uh, helpful for people who get headaches or like find that it's just too heavy and strains their neck. Other than that, as far as the build goes, you have two 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks on both sides. So you can buy online some uh, accessories for earbuds that just plug into both sides, uh, which is pretty cool. And you also have the charging port, which is USB type C, which also functions for using as the link to your PC. So, very nice. Inside the headset, you have two 1440 by 1600 displays at 72 hertz, which gives you about like about 110 field of uh, degrees of field of view, which compared to all the other products that's on the market, it's on the lower end in terms of resolution, refresh rate, and FOV. Um, however, it is forgivable seeing that it, for one, comes with a manual IPD adjustment, which not all headsets offer. Second, it is a standalone headset, so not only does it have to fit that display, it also has to have all the processing and everything that goes on inside the headset. So, although it's not exactly the best, um, considering the price and what it offers, I still think it's pretty good. And also, yes, because of the low resolution, there is a slight screen door effect uh, where you can kind of see the pixels if you really look, it, unless you're like fully immersed in the game. Once you're fully immersed, you kind of don't notice things like that. Um, but it, it makes sense for the reasons I gave before and also uh, just recently came to me because of the battery life. Because if you have to push all those pixels all the time, then the battery is not going to last very long. And from what I've heard, I've never fully used the VR for standalone. I've never used the Quest for standalone. However, I've heard that you get about three hours of game time, which honestly is pretty impressive. What good is a headset without a good pair of controllers? And admittedly, I've never really used any other uh, controllers or any other headset really before, um, but I really do like them. Uh, I, admittedly, I'd prefer like what the Valve has, the, the Valve Index, it has a um, knuckle strap, which seems pretty cool because the, the wrist strap here just doesn't feel secure. It doesn't, I, you know, when you think of a wrist strap, you think of the Wii remote, right? Which it has like a little clamp that latches on so it's going nowhere. But this just, it's, it's a little flimsy. The tracking is great. The triggers feel amazing. The haptic feedback is satisfying and the capacitive touch buttons, which like activate sometimes without even you having to press it fully. It just detects when there's any kind of force applied to it. That's a nice touch. And although they are made of plastic, they are quite durable. Um, as you can see, my friend uh, hit the wall with this and it still works just fine. Uh, although that isn't coming out, I don't think, uh, which is unfortunate, but that's life. To access the batteries, you just pull down on here and you can see it's powered by a single AA. Uh, and it is a good placement for the AA. However, um, sometimes when you're like in intense games, especially like Beat Saber, a lot of people will attest to the fact that um, the, you know, as, as cool as the magnet is, it's not enough to stop it from just slipping sometimes while you're playing Beat Saber because you're just going with so much force to hit the notes. And it does, you can feel it slide out. It doesn't mess anything up. It just kind of feels weird sometimes, but that's it. If you do get the Oculus Quest and you don't like the controllers, just wait a little bit. Uh, there's going to be a new controller coming out, so I've heard, along with a new headset. But the new controllers are backwards compatible with the this version of the Oculus Quest. So... I'm pretty excited to see what that looks like. The setup process was relatively simple. Be prepared to do everything on your phone. You can't actually set this up without your phone, which is kind of strange. Um, and also when you set up your account for the first time, it asks for your credit card twice. You don't have to give it to them, but it does ask for it, which not a great first impression, um, especially when Facebook is already kind of iffy enough but maybe that's just me. After you do all of that, you just set up your guardian for the boundaries so you're not bumping into walls and you're good. Uh, there is a feature that I actually really appreciate with the quest, which is called pass through, which all you do is you just double tap on the side and it allows you to see through the four cameras that are on the quest, which I don't think I've mentioned yet. Basically, the main draw of the quest <laughs> For a lot of people is the fact that you don't need to set up lighthouses a lot of bigger uh, more expensive vr headsets require lighthouses for the sensors to detect the controller and the headset however this um these cameras allow for the headset to do all of the tracking in your space and for your controllers so it saves a lot of time saves a lot of space saves a lot of money um i can't believe i haven't mentioned that um so pass through 
allows you to look through the cameras. Now it is all in black and white, um, and it's not the clearest picture. It, these cameras aren't amazing, but it's better than nothing. So if someone walks into your room and you want to see who it is, you just double tap and you go, hey, get out of my room, please. I'm playing Beat Saber. And then just, it's, I, I really appreciate it. I think, I think it's a genius feature. Beat Saber. Now, as someone who's only played VR games once or twice in the past, um, booting this up for the first time and doing the whole opening tutorial thing, it was, it was pretty magical. I'm not gonna lie. It's it's a surreal experience. Everyone needs to try at least once, um, because playing video games on like a computer monitor is one thing. Playing it in a 3D space where you're able to interact with everything and you you see everything you're gr able to grab things with your own hands and it, it's 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 crazy it, it's an amazing experience um now i kind of spoiled myself with using the oculus link and playing half-life alex because wow <laughs> half-life alex is unreal it's so realistic and immersive that everything else pales in comparison. Now, don't get me wrong, there are a lot of great VR games out there. But I could easily say that Half-Life Alex is probably the best single-player experience you could get out of a VR headset, period. Full stop. No cap. That's it. It's a bold statement, I know, but uh, I'm sticking by it because whole... It, oh, ah! Everybody needs to play it at least once. Come on. Not only that, but there are some amazing party games that you can play with your friends um, that are just hilarious, where it's like asymmetrical. One person has the VR headset and everyone else plays on the TV with their controllers and stuff. There's some amazing games. So overall, I'm actually really happy with the Oculus Quest. The controllers, are they feel great. They're accurate. They're responsive. Um, the headset, the quality is good. It's admittedly a little front heavy, but can be countered with a counterbalance. And it's great for the price. Um, and it makes for a great um, personal headset and also one that's great for gatherings and stuff. As long as it's six people, seven people, seven people and under. What's the rule? Six, seven? I don't know. Keep it, keep it small. Plus, with the inside out tracking, you don't need to worry about setting up lighthouses. So if you want to play in one room and then you decide you have to play somewhere else, you don't have to set up the whole thing. You can just move your headset and controller and go into the next room, set up your garden, and you're good to go. So that is such a great feature that I really love. Just make sure you have enough space because even when you think you have enough space, you still don't. So just have plenty of space to work with. Also, I forgot to mention, and this is very important, if you do buy one of these, do not use it outside and keep it away from direct sunlight. So keep it away from windows, or if it is, keep the lenses facing away from the windows, or even buy one of these lens covers just to protect it from scratching and to protect it from light. Um, because with something as expensive as this, it's, it's in your best interest to take good care of it. Anyway, I hoped this helped you decide on whether or not you think VR is right for you or whether or not you think uh, the Quest is the right one for you or whatever situation you're in. I do think uh, it's taken a while, but I think VR is slowly, finally starting to pick up um, thanks to the PSVR being more affordable and the Quest being more affordable for the masses because let's face it, not everybody is willing to spend about a thousand bucks to buy a Valve Index. As nice as it would be, it's a little unreasonable. I hope more people get into VR because it's really a unique experience. It's unparalleled. Um, and everybody needs to try it at least once, I believe. Well, not everybody, but you know, if, if you're into technology at the very least, you need to try VR. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I will be sure to respond to them, whether it be about the headset or whatever. I love talking to you guys. Um, and if you found this to be a somewhat, at least, comprehensive review, uh, you know, let me know by dropping a like or commenting, or if you're feeling generous, subscribing. Um, and until then, I guess I'll see you in the next one.